friends, family, and card fighters from around the world. Welcome to today's deck profile on G Era Dragonic Blade Master. I thought I'd do this as a continuation from last week's standard Blade Master deck profile, and I will follow it up next week with a premium deck profile combining both decks into one. So Yep, this is the secondary deck for Kagero from the end of G. The primary was Overlord. Big surprise. Uh, this is my preferred Kagero deck. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoy it. Let's get right into it. And starting off, we have Lizard Soldier Conroe. For the guys who've been around for a while and know what this card already does... There's no explanation needed, but for those of you who have only really come in with standard and not too certain about it, uh, its first skill is when another Kagero rides this unit, you may call this card to regard. It's basically the Forerunner skill before Forerunner was a skill. Uh, its second skill is act to regard, counterblast one, retire this unit, search your deck for up to one grade one or less Kagero, reveal it to your opponent, put it into your hand, and then shuffle your deck. So that's... If you need a perfect guard, stride fodder, combo pieces, whatever, or hell, even if you want to, if you have him there at that point, a heal trigger so you can G-guard, you can even do that too. So, yeah, any of those cards that you need, right there in your hand. Yeah, definite, probably best starter that Cargo has access to in the premium format. So, for grade threes, for starters... Around four copies of Dragonic Blade Master Cohen. He's the, he's the Blaze ability, he's the main grade three of the deck, and with him, the deck just runs the way you want it to. So his first skill is Auto Vanguard, Counterblast One. When your G unit stride, you may pay the cost. If you do, choose one of your opponent's regards, retire it, choose one of your units with the Blaze ability, so he can choose himself, and give that unit 3,000 power until the end of turn. So, you know, for a deck that retires stuff, it's not bad. Your second skill is Auto Vanguard GB2. At the end of each turn, if your opponent has no rearguards, choose up to one grade three card with the Blaze ability from your drop zone and return it to your hand. So that's every turn. That's your turn, that's your opponent's turn. At the end of the turn, if there are no rearguards on your opponent's board, you get a grade three with Blaze from the drop zone. So some decks say, Tachikaze or Shadow Paladin in particular, you know, retiring their own board for skills, you could potentially, you know, get Stride Fodder on their turn, so, fun. But yeah, so for him, he's the main guy, you want to be on him when you're striding. Definite four. Next I play one copy of the original Dragonic Blade Master. Uh, he's on Stride skills, the same thing as Kuen, minus the power so it's only retiring a unit. Its first skill, though, is Continuous Vanguard GB2. If you have more regards than your opponent, this unit gets 5,000 power, critical plus one. So, yeah. I don't play it at more than one, because I only play the one because I like having the original as a sort of homage to where the deck started. And plus it doesn't have the Blaze ability, so you can't bring it into your hand. <laughs> so yeah, just the one. And then I run two copies of Wyvern Strike Juago. Again, Blaze ability. Uh, its skill is Counterblast 1, Soul Blast 1. When this unit is placed on Vanguard or Rearguard, you may pay the cost. If you do, choose one of your opponent's Rearguards in the same column and retire it. And its second skill is Continuous Vanguard Rearguard GB1. If your Vanguard is blazing, this unit gets plus 2,000 power for each of your opponent's open Rearguard circles in the back row. So... It has a it has a max potential of seventeen thousand power on rearguard. It's a good beat stick. It you know can retire a unit on place, which is decent. But but mainly it's there because it's a blaze grade three, which has a also has a decent skill as well. So as a as the blaze goes, it's a good secondary grade three. And if you don't want to play the original blade master like I like to then you'd run it at three. 
for grade twos, I run four copies of Dragon Knight and Buddy and Booty. I still don't know how to say that properly. Uh, Blaze ability, yep. Uh, skill is Auto Regard GB2, Counter Blast 1. When this unit attacks a Vanguard, if you have a Blazing Vanguard with Blade Master in its card name, you may pay the cost. If you do, draw a card, and this unit gets plus 2,000 power until the end of the battle for each of your opponent's open Regard circles. So, it's, it's, a, it's a really good card. You can hit uh, 19k with this. It's... You know, add card to hand, power hitter. For me, I like it as a as a four. It's a it's a really nice card to have, and I really like seeing it. So four. Next, I run three copies of Dragon Knight Nadim. Uh, Blaze ability. <laughs> Skill is auto regard when this unit attacks a vanguard. If your vanguard is blazing until the end of that battle, this unit gets plus 2000 power and auto regard GB1 when this unit hits a vanguard counter block, counter charge one. Sorry. So it's an 11k attacker, which means it hits, you know, with the exception of cross ridden grade threes and cosmic hero dude. He hits all grade threes in from the G era and um he adds the on hit pressure of if you let me hit I get resources so yeah three of is a good number. Um three three next rounding off the grain two grade grade twos I run four copies of Dragon Knight Tanaz. So Tanaz has a very basic skill. It's not a blaze unit so no uh, it has a very basic skill, which is when your opponent's regard is put into the drop zone due to an effect of your card, this unit gets 5k until the end of turn. That's every time. So, it's max potential in in as a G deck, playing other G decks, is it gets an additional 25,000 power, pushing him up to 23. That's not including any buffs he may get from, say, the stride skill or anything, or triggers. And, you know, if if you were to play him in premium, he can get even higher than that. So, yeah. Definite four for me. I love having a powerhouse beat stick available to me. So, yeah. Four of. For grade ones, I play four copies of Dragon Knight Nadel. Nadel. I, it's another one that I'm not 100% certain how to say. <laughs> it's Blaze Ability. Skill is auto regard once per turn when your opponent's rear guard is put into the drop zone due to the effect of a card. If you have a vanguard with Dragonic Blade Master in its card name, until the end of turn, this unit gets auto regard when your vanguard becomes blazing, counter charge one, and this unit gets 4k until the end of turn. This is your main counter charge unit. You can use it multiple times a game it's not requiring hitting anything or having x amount of damage face down it's just a straight up power bonus plus counter charge so definite four of i want to see this card as often as i can so yeah great card next around three copies of dragon knight tahir also has the blaze ability. Skill is auto GB1, counter blast one. When this unit is placed on rear guard, if the number of your rear guards is less than your opponent's, you may pay the cost. If you do, choose one of your opponent's rear guards and retire it. So it, it's really good in that sense against decks like Gold Paladin or Royal Paladin that can fill their board really quickly. So you can call this out and Start hitting units of the board to bring them down before you use your main vanguard skills to take out a couple. And just pretty much helps you guarantee that blaze ability going off in those situations. Uh, second skill is if your vanguard is blazing, this unit gets 2k. So it's almost always a 9k when it's on the field. So that extra little 2 can help push for numbers. So yeah, 3 is good for me. Then I run two copies of Dragon Dancer Marcel. 
uh, Blaze ability again. Uh, skill is Auto Regard GB1. When this unit boosts, if your Vanguard is blazing until the end of the turn, this unit gets 2k. So it's a 9k booster. And Auto Regard when your unit's attack hits a Vanguard. Look at five cards from the top of your deck. Search for up to one card with the Blaze ability from among them. Reveal it to your opponent, add it to your hand, and shuffle your deck. So it sort of shuffles around with Tahir in that sometimes I want to, I feel like maybe bumping her up to three and cutting Tahir down. Um, she's really nice on hit pressure. If if you hit while she's boosting, the reward's pretty good because you do have a lot of options to choose from in the top five with Blades, with Blaze cards. And um, I think two... I think a minimum of two is good for her, just having that option in the deck. Then I run two Lava Flow Dragon Stride Flutters. Uh, you don't need more than two in this deck, given that your main grade three can sort of fund the cost for stride itself. Um, you mainly play two because on the off chance... Well, A, you want to correct into Koen if you get the wrong grade 3. And B, if you ride and you don't have another grade 3 in hand, it just gives you more of an opportunity to have a card in hand to be able to stride with, as opposed to having to hard stride with multiple cards. So yeah, 2 is good for this deck. You don't really need more than 2. And finally for the grade 1s, 4 copies of Flare Trooper Dungeon. So, Flare Trooper Dumjid's skill, minus the perfect guard bit, is that if you have another Flare Trooper Dumjid in the drop zone, this unit gets 15,000 shield. So, the other option that people would play is Protect Orb for the counter charge, but this deck counter charges enough that you don't need that. That's just additional counter charges that you just sort of don't know what to do with. Um, so having the option to perfect guard, or if you're in a bit of a tight situation with what's in your hand, um, and you only need, say, a 10k shield, to be able to chuck this down and have that is also a good option. So I like having the perfect guard that gives me options. So, yeah, I think Dumjid's definitely my preferred perfect guard for this deck. On to triggers, I run two copies of Janat, which is the name crit. So, for those of you who aren't aware, when your Vanguard attacks, if it's Dragonic Blade Master in the name, put it into Soul, draw a card, give it 5k. So, yeah. So, just two. Uh, then I run four copies of Fire Chase Dragon. So, six crits in total. Uh, Fire Chase Dragon skill is Auto Regard GB1, retire this unit. When your opponent's unit in the same column as his unit is retired, you may pay the cost. If you do, retire all of your opponent's regards in the same column as this unit. So, it's mainly there for if you want to try and take out a resist unit. If the whole column has resist, then you can't use it. But So, if they have, say, a resist front row unit, you can put this in the column, take out the back row with another skill, use its skill to then take out the grade two with resist or something. Uh, so I play four of it for that reason, because it can help me target resist units if I need to. So yeah, four fire chase. I think it's a very nice option. Then I run three copies of Seal Dragon Art Peak. It's the Margul clone. You put it into the soul and give you unit 3k. And one copy of Gatling Claw. I The reason I only play one copy of Gatling Claw is you only need one copy. Because you're only ever going to use this skill once if you choose to use it. And if you really need it, you can search it out with Conroe. Uh, the, the likelihood that it's going to be in your damage zone in the first two cards that hit the damage zone is very unlikely. So... But I've never found the need for two because I rarely ever even need the one. So having the option is nice, but you don't need more than one. Then I run two copies of Inspire Yell Dragon. It's 
got the blaze ability, and its skill is act rearguard GB1, put this in the unit on the bottom of your deck. When the, your vanguard becomes blazing, you may pay the cost. If you do, draw a card, choose one of your units, and it gets plus 5k until the end of turn, and then shuffle your deck. So it's, in a way, it's like a pseudo draw trigger from before you draft check. It just giving a unit extra power, drawing a card, siphoning a trigger back into the deck, you know, they're all good things, and it's all wrapped into one common trigger, so I think two of is good, you don't need more than two, because, you know, you're constantly shuffling it back in anyway, so, yeah, two's a good number for that, and then, finally, for the main deck, four Dragon Dancer Taras. Every deck has a Tara clone. They're literally named after her. Uh, you can bind this unit and another heal trigger from your drop zone when you discard it for the cost of a G Guardian and counter charge or soul charge one. Every deck at the end of G was playing these. So, yeah, pretty much everyone who's been at the game for more than, you know, a year should know what this is. So, yep. Four of those. And then... Onto the G zone. Generation zone. Four copies of Supreme Heavenly Emperor Dragon Dragonic Blade Master Titan. Yeah. Uh, Blaze ability. Skill is Act Vanguard once per turn. G GB2. Counter Blast 1. Flip any unit in your G zone. Choose up to the same number of your opponent's regards as the number of face-up cards named Supreme Heavenly Emperor Dragon Dragonic Blade Master Titan. So, however many of these are face-up. And retire them, and until the end of turn, this unit gets continuous vanguard. If this unit is blazing, it gets critical plus one. So, at its strongest point, you can retire three units and go critical. So, it's not at all a bad card. It's a it's a good card to have where you can build up using other strides that flip random things. I like having four because it fits the theme of the deck. I like being able to retire things for that extra turn. And yeah, I really I, I really like just having four of them. So yeah, four for me. Next I run three copies of Flare Arms Ziegenberg. Probably the one decision I make most people would disagree with is that I only play three. I personally do not see the point in playing four. I don't like playing four. I think that really you're only going to go if if you you're only going to go into this twice, and if you're going to go into it four times like a lot of people do, it's because you're purposely using it four times, not because it requires four uses. Uh, so its skill is, it has the blaze ability, its first skill is act vanguard once per turn, soul blast one, f flip a copy of itself and retire one of your opponent's regards, meh. Its second skill is auto vanguard once per turn, GB3, counter blast one, choose the same number of cards from your hand as your, as your opponent's re, as the number of your opponent's regards and discard them. At the end of the battle, this unit attacked, if it is blazing, you may pay the cost if you do stand this unit and it gets drive minus two. So the second skill is essentially, if your opponent has no board, you can counter blast to restand all the way to the other end of the spectrum where if they have a full board, you end up discarding five. So, yeah. Again, it's one of those cards where it ha it is a very good card when it goes off the way you want it to. But if you're in a position where your opponent can recover really quickly or you're playing a resist deck or something, it just loses a lot of its potency because you're get, getting rid of your hand to activate it. So hence why I only play three. Next, I run two copies of Transcendence Divine Dragon Nouvelle Vagal Express. Skill is... Act Vanguard once per turn, GB2, Counter Blast 1, flip a copy of itself face up, and until the end of the turn this unit gets Continuous Vanguard during the battle that this unit attacked, attacks a Vanguard. 
your opponent cannot call grade one cards from hand to guard circle. So it ha it is a guard restrict. Any grade one nulls are out of the question. And continuous vanguard during your turn, if the number of cards in your opponent's damage zone is five or more, your opponent's trigger effects are nullified. So basically that second skill means there is no miracle heal. They cannot six damage heal while this card is attacking. So sorry. Dur during your turn. So if you can get some big numbers going and get them get three attacks going, if they get that heal, it doesn't matter. So I like having that option if I'm in a bit of a tough spot, if my resources aren't that good, if, you know, it, it's just nice having the option. Next I will play one copy of Supreme Heavenly Emperor Dragon Axen Grave Dragon. Uh, has a blaze ability. Its skill is act vanguard once per turn, counter plus one, choose a face down card from your G zone, and turn it face up. Until the end of the turn, this unit gets auto vanguard when this blazing unit attacks, draw a card, choose one of your opponent's rearguards, and retire it. So, it's not a card you'll use mid game, it's, it is your first stride. Uh, Kagero at the end of G didn't have a better first stride. Um, so he allows you to flip a copy of Titan, he draws you a card, he retires another unit. Uh, so he's not a bad card, but there w weren't really many options that were better for a first stride. So yeah, he's a good first stride and only play the one. Then I play one copy of the G8. Uh, the g 8 skill is when this unit attacks a vanguard, retire all of your opponent's rearguards and all of your rearguards get 10,000 power until the end of turn. If three or more units are retired, this unit gets 10,000 power, critical plus one until the end of turn. So it's, you know, towards the end of the game, when you've stridden a few times, you go into this guy, you board wipe them for free, Every unit on your board can get 10 power, 10k power for free, and he goes critical as well. Um, if they don't have three units, then he doesn't get the 10k crit, but almost all decks will have three units on the board, depending on how you play the, play the turn you use this guy. And you can just, it's much better than the Xeroth Dragon. I don't even play the Xeroth Dragon, it's just not worth it. Uh, so yeah, the G8 is very good in this deck and definitely, definitely worth playing. On to G-Guardians, I run two copies of everyone's favourite G-Guardian, Denial Griffin, or Flame Wing Steel Beast Denial Griffin. <sighs> this card pissed a lot of people off. Um... So its skill is count plus one. When this unit is placed on guard circle, you may pay the cost. If you do, choose one of your opponent's attacking rearguards and retire it. So the way that works, the official ruling is when you use this card, the attack is negated. So if you put it in front of a, say, an 80k 5 crit rearguard swing or an on hit you lose sort of thing, if you put this in front of it and activate its skill, doesn't matter. You've just completely, you've retired it, you've nullified the attack, it doesn't go through. The attack is cancelled, so. Yeah, two copies of Denial Griffin, you should play two in every cargo deck. It is probably the, more people get annoyed when this hits than I think any other G-Guard, so. Yeah, two of for sure. Then I play one copy of Divine Dragon Knight Absalom. Skill is counter blast one when this unit is placed on guard circle during the battle that your vanguard was attacked by your opponent's vanguard. You may pay the cost. If you do, this unit gets 10,000 power until the end of turn. And I'm sorry, until the end of that battle for each of your opponent's open rearguard circles. So 
you only play one of this card because it does rely on your opponent not being able to refill their board after you've board wiped them. So having more than one sort of, you know, you're playing too much of a chance to get it. But when it goes off, it can hit really big guard numbers and it, you know, can or will save you in a game. So the one of is good. The one of is quite nice. Uh, next I play one copy of Flame Emperor Dragon King Asil Orb Dragon. He's a, when placed, if your opponent has four or less regards, they get 5,000, this unit gets 5,000 shield until the end of turn. It's 20k shield, it's pretty easy to get. Um, unless, unless you're playing one of those really high deck, refreshing decks like gold or royals, your opponent will find it really hard to have a full board against this deck um i think the only other deck that really that pops into my head straight away is pale moon because i can pull a lot of stuff out of the soul and fill the board really quickly um but yeah so it it generally works you know like 90 percent of the time and finally i play one copy of mixed element colburn It's skill is choose a card from your hand, discard it when this unit is placed on guard circle during the battle that your opponent's vanguard attacked. You may pay the cost. If you do, this unit gets 5,000 power until the end of that battle for every two cards in your opponent's hand. So it can hit really big numbers, especially against decks that draw a lot. Uh, he doesn't require a counter blast. You can afford to get rid of one card when you're going to use him. And on top of that, his artwork is awesome so yeah the, the artwork alone was you know do i want to play him because he just looks so good so yeah um so that was my dragonic blade master deck a g error uh next week i'll be bringing a premium blade master on as a you know a trio of blade masters so yeah i hope you enjoyed the deck i hope I hope someone has watched it and decided to try and build their own version of Dragonic Blade Master from G-Era. And I will see you next week. Thanks for watching.